Hello, Nuggets. Now, all you get to see my hands and stuff today because I have no makeup on. I don't need to wear makeup every day. And I'm, I'm still, you know, recovering from the narcotsy stuff. And sleep, whatever. That's not complaining about that. What we're talking about today is veggies that you buy at like 50% off. There's nothing wrong with buying the veggies on the 50% off at all. Mostly if you're on a budget, man. Um, I mean, we're going to look at them. There's nothing at all. I mean, yeah, they need to be consumed on the day you buy them. So, we're going to cook some of them. I don't really have a recipe because I'm winging it, which I usually do. Um, but I am going to do something with like these little potatoes. And then I'm going to do a second dish like I usually do. A second dish in this Pyrex thing. I'm so technical because, you know, I'm a chef or whatever. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, this is where we're going to have like pork and, and the veggies and we're going to have something in here. But we're going to do something really yummy with um, these potatoes on the side. And then at the end we'll put them together. First, let's look at what I bought at 50% off. This whole thing of onions. And did I buy this yesterday with my groceries? Actually, no. I bought it last Thursday. There's nothing wrong. I mean, okay. There's this one onion. That sucks. So we'll throw that one out. This onion. Uh, whatever. Okay, we can throw that one out too. But all these other onions. Oh, this one's not perfect. So we have four onions, and I have already used a few out of this, but at 50% off, if I look at my receipt, I paid like 97 cents, and I still have this many onions that we can use. So, yay for me. These are my favorite. They're my favorite mushrooms. I always get them at 50% off. I don't know if it's because... This is what they're supposed to look like. They're supposed to be this dark of a color. It's, I mean, don't ask me what kind of mushroom they are. Um, but, you know, this is the mushroom. I mean, there is absolutely nothing wrong with these mushrooms. This is just the color that they're supposed to be for this kind of mushroom. I always find big bags of them when they're 50% off. Now, I just looked at my receipt. I paid $2.48 for all of these mushrooms. And... There's nothing wrong with them. They're just a darker color because this is the kind of mushroom they are. So yeah, we're going to include these in today's meal. These peppers. These colorful, sweet peppers. This particular pack was not at 50% off. It was on sale, however, for $2.49, which is awesome. What I'm going to do with it again, they're not all going to fit with my meal today. So I'm going to do some meal prep in the freezer for another time. I will show that at the end. But I have gotten packs like these at the 50% off. And when they're the 50% off, they're, there's like little wrinkles. You know, they're, they're not at their freshest. They're still really good. And again, I buy them at 50% off. I do, however, that day, like as soon as I get home wash them, chop them up, put them in the freezer, and then they're perfectly fine. Every time I want to make a meal, I just go to the freezer and pull them out. Like this. This is how I freeze them in portions. So I do have a little bit of onions on the top of there. So I've chopped them all up, and then I have them in uh, portioned out. Depending if I'm just making a small something, I might just use one. If I'm going to fill, you know, this big thing here with meat and make a huge meal that will have a lot of leftovers, I will probably use two of these little bags. So what I've done is put a little bit of those small onions in the top, and then I chopped these up and put them in there. So, and I also put a date on there just for myself so that I know how long it's been in there. But there's nothing wrong with these. So some of these today are be going into what we're cooking. But what we're not putting in the cooking, we're going to be putting in bags like this, freezing for another day. Because, again, I only get money once a month. Gotta make it last. So, those are my tips. And then we have these little potato things that are so yummy. 50% off. And I just looked at my receipt. I paid $1.99. $1.99 for all these. Now let's open them up and see why they're on 
for 50%. Because they look pretty good in that bag to me. Because so. we're going to cook some of these on the side. So, yeah. There's nothing wrong with these potatoes at all. Nothing. Look at them. There's nothing wrong with these. They're not half rotten. They're, there's nothing squishy on them. They smell fine. There's nothing wrong with these. So why were they on 50%? I don't know. But all I know is that it's my win. My gain. Their loss. My gain, right? So I'm, I'm cooking. And it is just for me. But I mean, when it comes to like a whole family, we're going to make a full one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wash them and then cut them up. We're going to cook them a little bit for about 10 minutes, just a little bit, to start the cooking. If not, it takes way too long in the oven. And then we're going to put like a little sauce with some garlic and all that whatnot. Bake them in the oven with our other, you know, pork and veggie bake. And at the end, I might um, broil them with some cheese on top. I don't know. I'm finally starting to incorporate a little bit of dairy back into my diet. Um, other than that, I still eat, you know, preservative free, soy free, dairy free, gluten free, whatever. But I do have a little bit of cheese as dairy and so far, I'm okay. So we're going to go do that and uh, we'll be back. Alright, so yeah, the window's open. It's okay. It's beautiful out there. Um, so this is about the size that I'm cutting them up at. Try to make them all about the same size so that they'll cook evenly. So I'm about this much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them in a pot, obviously. Um, cook them for about 10 minutes. So it'll be halfway cooked before I put them in the oven. And, and then we're going to go and we're going to start um, slicing and chopping these beautiful peppers. Again, some of them are going to be going um, in there. And some of them are going to be freezing. If you're someone like me that suffers from you know, fatigue, chronic pain, chronic illness, or, or whatnot. Sometimes getting everything ready and like ready to go little portion bags makes it so much easier. So you get all your prep done on the days where you have energy. On the days where you don't have that much energy, it's kind of already done. So you just open the little portion things, put them all in a pot and cook them. It, it's, I guess, a tip. Hmm. Yeah. Peppers. So, peppers, peppers, peppers. You always want to wash your peppers under cold water before you chop them up. Um, that's like two reasons. One, like they come from the field. Sometimes there can be some cross contamination. You just want to get rid of that. Now I have a niece and nephew. My nephew's four and he's cute AF. And for a while my sister was in my life and helping me out. And he would come help out with her groceries. And being four, he loved to help. If you guys knew how many peppers he accidentally dropped on the ground and put back in the thing. And it's not just little kids. People do that all the time. People just touch them all. So you definitely want to wash all those germs off. Even if they come in like a little baggy thing. Just the best thing to do. Um, now, I'm not a master chef, obviously. I like to watch the show. I'll never be on it. But the easiest way to like not lose any part of... I know it's the wrong size knife, too. I'm also too lazy to dirty 17 knives. Right. But the easiest way to do it is just cut the top part out. And then you just pull the core out. So I just pulled out all the seeds. Now there's a few of them. There's a few of them left in there. See? There's nothing, there's nothing left in there. So I did tap out the few extra seeds that were in there into my sink. And I do have that little doodad from the Dollarama that catches all the stuff so it doesn't go down the sink and clog my drain. Hey, why not? It's like two bucks. Invest in it. And I cut them in half. These are actually nice size peppers. And just because I'm picky, I tend to take this part off. But you know what? There's actually nothing wrong with these little white parts. This is about how thick I like to slice my peppers. But you can do whatever you want because it's your life. It's your family. If you want to chop them up even more, smaller, whatever, you do what you want because it's your life. It's, cooking is a personal preference for some things. I mean, some people like mushrooms. Some people don't. <clears throat> Nat. <laughs> some people like tomatoes. Nat again. Uh, my friend, she's, she's a very picky eater, but I mean, 
that's okay. She's still my friend, and you know what? This comes down to, you know, the whole being offended is a choice. We can be friends even though we don't like the same foods. That's cool. We can still be friends. And I joke about it a little bit with her that she doesn't like certain things. But it's joking. But it's in a respectful manner. Am I offended? Do I get mad at her? No. All I'm saying is that you can move on from things. You can have friendships where you and the other person don't have the same opinion on a certain subject. Being offended is a choice. You're the one that's choosing to have that, you know. And the other person should also respect, you know, if you guys have a difference of opinion on a certain thing. The other person should respect that. And then both of you just don't talk about it. And that said, the potatoes are boiling. I'm going to go time them for 10 minutes. Since I'm giving out a little bit of wisdom that may or may not be wanted while I'm chopping these up, there's something that I did learn in the past few years, and this is actually an energy-saving tip. Did you all know that your water will boil if you don't have it on high? You can put your burner on eight, and your water will still boil. Things will cook just as much. And just making the difference of putting your burner on eight instead of high to boil your water will make a difference in your electricity bill. Will it give you 10, 15 bucks off? Probably not. But over a course of a year, will it give you 10, 15 bucks off? Yeah, it actually will. Another tip for saving energy is something that I use a lot, but mostly because I was afraid of the oven. Now, I'm slowly getting over that because this is going to cook in the oven. But I have a convection toaster oven. Now, they cost about 150 for really good ones. And, I mean, they last. I mean, that's all I cooked my food in solely for about, like, 10 years. That as well, if you're someone who's like me, who's, who's a single person in their home, or, or there's just two of you, and you can fit what you want to eat in a pan this size, if you want to fit what you're going to cook in a pan of this size, just use the toaster oven. It uses way less energy to just use the toaster oven than of heating up the entire oven. So your electricity bill will be less money. I, that's just my tip on that. I don't eat pizza anymore unless it's like the gluten-free and I can only find it at Domino's. I can't buy it at the store. But most of the good toaster ovens that conduction's even better. About 150 bucks. They do come on sale every once in a while, like you're going on Christmas. You can actually fit like a, a frozen 12-inch pizza in, in back and they make it perfectly fine. So and I, I did that as well for, for years when I was eating them. Okay, so these are my three peppers all chopped up. Obviously, not all of them are going to go into my supper. I just bought, like, um, these size reusable bags from Dollarama, I think, or Walmart, something like that. And, yeah, I reuse them. I wash them, and I reuse them. Why? Because I can. I mean, it keeps them out of the environment. And, two, I'm poor. And you can reuse them a few times, so that's it. So what I'm going to do now over on this cutting board is cut up a few of the onions to mix in the portion wise with the little bags. If you can see, I have wooden cutting boards. This one I paid a lot of money for. I've had it for a long time. However, I got this one at Dollarama for four bucks. And uh, I ain't mad at that either. My thing is, yes, I, I do like quality things. I've learned a few things along the way for quality. And if you use a glass cutting board, like like the ones that are back there, behind all my stuff, behind my, my smoothie maker, those glass cutting boards. Um, it will dull the edge of your knife. So wooden cutting boards are the best for, you know, good knives. But when it comes to cutting anything that is meat, I always use a plastic cutting board. Again, you can get those at the Dollarama because then you can really disinfect it. I just like disinfecting everything, that's just me. But if you cut meat or anything on a wooden cutting board, the wood will absorb it. And just in case, it's safer to not cut and use meat on a wooden cutting board. Go with a plastic one. We're going to put these off to the side. And we're going to get the potatoes ready now. I plan on baking these. So first, I have like a little pan. Um, I don't know if this came with a toaster oven, but it's the perfect size, but I don't think so. I think I actually got this at the Dollarama. So 
So we're gonna line it with tin foil. So I like to use the heavy duty one. Um, you know, no name brand is just as good as anything else. You're gonna wanna place the tin foil like with the middle part because we're gonna wrap it and close it. And then this is like the niftiest thing ever. I think my mom got it at Epicure. She gave it to me. So yeah, it looks like, you know, the pan. All those aerosol cans, but it's not. Um, it's just extra virgin olive oil in there. And there's a part to it, there's the top part. So you put this in there and you use this part to pump up and it builds up the pressure in here. And then you can spray it. So that's way healthier for the environment, healthier for you. Again, I think this comes from Epicure. Oh, potatoes are ready. I think it comes from there. I'm not too, too sure. If you do know where to get these for other people who are looking for them, comment below. And if it happens to be you that's selling them, comment below. Go ahead. Sell these. They're awesome. So we have the potatoes all laid out. They're halfway cooked. That's good. We're going to put a little sauce to put on top of them. So that's what we got here. And it's just a little bit of this. So I like to use these... Um, craft it can be the no-name kind they're just as good these vinaigrettes as bases to all my sauce i am going to you know put this over the meat and the veggies as well it just already kind of has the right amount of of seasoning in there so it's kind of just the lazy way easy way and uh, a little bit of garlic in here so we're going to mix this together and put it over um yeah no vampires are going to eat me in the middle of the night <laughs> let's just put that that way Again, it's all to taste. If you like garlic, put some in there. If you don't, don't put some in there. It's up to you. Just put butter or do whatever you want. It's your food. I have this, you know, silicone brush thing. Again, dollar ammo for a couple bucks. Is the other kind better? Like the brush, brush, brush? Probably. I'm just brush it over everything. I'm not that good at this, but you know. All right. So here are our potatoes. I did decide to add a few onions, like a tiny little one, since I have a bunch of tiny little ones, um, for a little bit of extra taste. But if you could smell this, oh man, it smells delicious. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna close it all up and uh, put it aside. Cause it's gonna take me about two minutes to do the other part, then we'll put them in the oven. Which reminds me, I need to preheat my oven at 375. All right, so we have in here, um, I did spray a little bit of the exact same other oil in there so it doesn't stick. I have taken my rings off because that was touching meat and just something like that. So the pork's in the bottom. It's actually like pork tenderloin. I buy it in the big chunks, chop them up. I could take my own butcher. Uh, sounds weird, but, and then those onions in the bottom. So this is what we're gonna use for a sauce. There's already, you know, a lot of flavors in there already. For most people, that just might be good enough. I personally like to go a little bit extra, so I'm gonna season the meat a little bit. A little bit of pepper, and then I'm also gonna put a little bit of this Montreal, um, well, chicken spice, but it's all there, Montreal steak spice kind of a flavor. Um, not a lot of it. So I'm putting about this much of it into the entire thing, because it will overpower everything else. So we have all the spices in there. And now we just add the veggies. So I happen to have a lot of mushrooms over here because I like mushrooms. Remember I said that my friend doesn't like mushrooms? If my friend were to be coming over for supper tonight, I would not include mushrooms in this dish. It's called respect, it's pretty simple. Um, I know I sounded angry when I talk about that, but I just, it baffles me about how some people just need everything, I don't know. And I'm the autistic kid. Anyway, so we're going to put a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange. Ooh, I just remembered, I have some frozen broccoli. Let's throw that in there too. Alright, so here we have everything in there. So those are the leftover peppers I didn't use. We will put them in individual portions. But so in the bottom of this layer, if we go look under here, there's pork and onions and some seasoning. There's some frozen broccoli in there. There's the fresh peppers. Some mushrooms. Again, if you don't like broccoli, don't put it in there, you know? If kids don't like it or you got a picky eater, just don't put it in there. And when it comes to vegetables, whether they're frozen, fresh, or in a can, 
They're still vegetables, they still count, they're still good for you. Whatever your picky eater will eat, whatever you can afford, throw it in there. The next thing I'm going to do is put some of this sauce on top of that, cover it with foil, put it in the oven at 375 for about an hour. Um, you can go for a little bit more, like I'll check to make sure that the meat is cooked, but it does help with these clear Pyrex for the bottom to cook because it's clear. Um, when it comes to the sauce, I go about like a fourth of the bottle to cover it to give some taste in there. And we'll be right back. Alright, so now I have the sauce in there. Yeah, and I did add um, a little bit of mustard on top of everything. Because I've learned from watching MasterChef that mustard is a very good complement to a lot of spices. Oh, you don't need a lot of it though. Just a little bit. So we're going to cover it with foil. In the oven. And by the way, um, there is no wrong way to put foil. Shiny side up, shiny side down. It doesn't matter. It's all the same stuff. They've actually done studies. People will have actually done studies about this. It's the exact same thing. It works the same. So we're going to cover this up. Okay, so they're both in the oven. So that is the pork and the veggies. And that is my potatoes. I'm going to close this. Here we go. We have the timer set for an hour. And yep, I have googly eyes on, on everything. It makes me happy. So what I'm going to do now is obviously clean up a little bit. So I am going to throw these into the portion bags and put a little bit of onions in there as well. I'm learning how to freeze. I'm going to try to see if you can freeze mushrooms. I've that you can, but it has, it's a little bit more complicated. So we're going to give that a try. And um, we're also going to chop up that banana that was over there. So yes, we're going to chop up this banana and freeze it into individual portions because of this. So for those of you who are new, I haven't told yet, but I need to eat this way because I have two autoimmune diseases. One of them is called esophagitis. esophagitis. Took me a long time to, to say that one. It's basically an abundance of white blood cells in my esophagus where they should not be there. And when I eat things that aggravate them, and we don't know what it was. So we eliminated soy, preservatives, dairy, eggs, gluten. We eliminated all that. I've been doing that since January of last year. So I'll 15 months now. And I've lost about 110 pounds, give or take. I'm also a little more active. But I went from a size 24 pants to a size 12. And now I'm in size 12 pants. But I'm not a big breakfast person. I also have hypoglycemia, so I kind of got to eat. So for breakfast, again, half of a banana, a scoop of this. This is found at Walmart for less than $25. It actually tastes pretty good. And I get the one that has like the greens because I can't have whey. I can't have any of that stuff in there. I can't have those ones because that would be against like my gluten free. Let's check out my freezer. So what I put in them is obviously blueberries. So. Um, one cup of blueberries and then I just bought this kind of fruit. I was just putting nothing but strawberries as like a half cup. But now I bought these kinds of the day and um, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. So I put that and that in there with the bananas. Oh, let me find a banana. Here are my bananas. So I chopped them up again and put them in parchment paper so they're individually and then I put them in a little baggie, so when it comes to making my smoothie in the morning, I just put a cup of this, half cup of this, one of these in there, a cup of... One scoop of that, and then there's my fridge. So I use two three-quarter cups of, like, you know, unsweetened silk, you know, almond milk. It can be the Almond Breeze too. I found that the generic brands, like Walmart brands, actually have other ingredients other than just what's on those, so those are better for me. Um, two three-quarter cups of these make three smoothies and then I also add flaxseed meal in there for fiber and for the benefits of like the omega-3 and what I did learn about flaxseed is you have to have it ground up it has to be ground because if you just have flax just like the seed itself you don't get any benefits because the husk is too hard and your body will not absorb it you'll just poop it out Right? I know, I just said that. But that's true. You will just go through you and it's not going to get digested. So you need, if you want to have 
the benefits, you have to get ground up. And then it says gluten-free on there, which is another thing. It's already gluten-free. The only reason they throw that up in there is for the fancy-pansy people that want to have everything gluten-free that don't do the research to realize that this is normally and naturally gluten-free. All right, everything is cooked. It's out of the oven. So if you look over here, look at all those colors. Look how there's steam coming out of it. Um, look at all those beautiful colors. So look at the beautiful colors. There's all sorts of layers. There's the meat on the bottom. It's fully cooked. That's gonna be yummy. And then these are the potatoes. So I did just throw some cheese on there. It's melting. So we're gonna have a so we're gonna have a supper with some side of potatoes and some of these veggies. And here is our plate. So I put all the potatoes on there. I'm probably not gonna eat it all. I'm not. There's gonna be leftovers. But I mean, it's half of the potatoes, half of the veggies, and the meat. And um, yeah, there's gonna be leftovers. I don't mind my own germs because it's just my plate. But that's gonna be delicious. I can't wait to get there. And and in here, there, there's still a lot left. That was my yummy supper. I'm gonna go enjoy that. Thanks, everyone.